Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome back to another day of health and wellness. <laughs> wellness and health. I know a lot of you get irked because it seems like I came to this presentation unprepared. Um, that's probably true. I bet a lot of us are unprepared for the things that have been happening throughout our environments. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to showcase a few of the things I saw on the trail, which include... Oh, check this out. So I hope I aimed it in the right direction. Um, I mean, I know the phone was aimed in the right direction. What I mean is, I hope that you got to see the scale of what I just got to see. These are things that in the past, quite frequently, a lot of my associates, friends, relatives, whatever we are to one another, um, would travel out to places with me and see these things. And it became increasingly obvious that not everyone is meant to see these things. And to be quite frank with you, many of the things that I've tried to capture remain uncaptured because it's not meant for me to showcase. In other words, I believe some of these things are so precisely timed that my electronics malfunctions that have happened throughout the past have almost kind of primed us, you know, especially the ones who have been with me when I called the shot and said, we're gonna see something right down here, and, and there it was, almost as if by some supernatural foresight. I start to wonder, wow, I'm looking, the view that I was just showing you, I can see the mist, it's just kind of rolling. It's, uh, you know, what you see on me, my, my level of glistening is my sweat, I was perspiring going uphill. And uh, yet, I also know that it might rain, so I'm carrying a really cool umbrella that I'll have for the rest of my life, I hope. And uh, just in case, you know? And I feel like I'm the only, <laughs> only person on these trails who has an umbrella. Um, I'm probably the only person who has a concert t-shirt on too right now. A lot of people are into the um, spandex and, you know, whatever's currently approved for walking on these types of terrain. Nothing that we wear really matters in terms of what's approved or unapproved. Uh, I once did the South Rim with a relative of mine who hiked the entirety of it in cowboy boots and uh, his feet were so acclimated to that that he felt fine the next day. And me, having barely walked at all, uh, with having actual hiking boots, I got blisters on my feet and I was unprepared. So in a lot of ways, some of the things that I saw and was able to showcase to you come down to whether or not I was prepared to capture the moment or not. And so that's why in this series I'm talking about the novelties of things like self-control and uh, peace and patience. The last clip I shared where I showed the aquarium, I recorded for a certain amount of time until the lights went out and then I went back and recorded some ambient sound to go with that. The sound was actually coming from another device altogether, but I wanted to replace the, the sound on that fish clip 
with something that was a little more pleasant to kind of drift off to. Um, surprise, Tracker, my dog, would bark in the background and disrupt the piece. So if you haven't really been following along with what I talk about, most of what I'm talking about is actually that, peace, and how to avoid disrupting the peace. And so that's why I'd like to show you after this video, which included that gorgeous display of the power and beauty and uh, abundance of Mother Nature, and you got to see it with me, not by chance. It was for some reason, some reason that we're highlighting day 30 almost effortlessly, although I can stand to get back to my original claim, which is that the information that I learned about a seven-day vegan challenge was absolutely life-changing for me. So, I'm talking about these things. Uh, there was a friend of mine who used to talk about sustainability and how those shampoo dispensers in the hotels are not disruptive enough to get the world to change. And so, in a way, I'm trying to do something that's disruptive, but without being destructive or disruptive. I want this to flow into your day just as naturally as these birds flew into our day together to show us that this guy who's talking with you right now is talking with absolute heart and compassion for those things that are around us. And it's not to show you the dirty, seedy underbelly of anything like corporations or voting against something different. It's only to showcase that we can do something different. And first and foremost, we need to stop contributing to those things that are not serving us. If it's not serving us, if it's causing us to bow down to it, to pick it up off the trails, the trash, pick up after one another, there might be a missing component to what we've been taught by our fathers in the past. And I don't make light of those words. I actually said in Our Father, prior to saying what I'm saying right now, and I asked for clarity and for the ability to show compassion with some way that would actually resonate. And that's, that's the majority of what I wanted to say today. I've run into many circumstances where I've been moderated out of existence when I ask questions in the relevant forums in which I participate. And I recognize that these forums are open to anybody. And I recognize more and more, thanks to the demographics of the information that I'm seeing uh, from the statistics provided freely on YouTube, if you subscribe to that type of application. And it shows me who's watching from where, how often, why. And I believe that there are a lot more people we're watching and not subscribing and not showcasing things because we don't know you know is this guy for real or the things that he says for real is he just like I'm just like everyone else that's the that's the thing I'm just like everyone else and I include just a little thing a little hint of compassion for that which is around me my primary consideration is to wildlife and nature I see that its demise might mark my own demise um, although I don't worry so much about my own demise despite the daunting things that we're being faced with in this world today. So one of the things speaking of that I found and saw on the trail that I didn't think about until afterwards was a mask. There are masks even up here in the middle of nowhere. I've, I'm way off trail and uh, frankly if it weren't for all the rubbish I might not be able to find my way back safely. Um, and if I find this mask again on the way back, if I don't, it's going to be a long way back because I'll be going the wrong way. But if I find this mask again, I need to remember to cut the elastic bands that were on the mask. Today's mission is not to pick up anything, although I might actually pick that up and anything else that's on the way. But I've, I didn't bring a pack. I didn't bring anything. It's not that I'm unprepared. It's that I need some help. And without your help, without sharing these clips, it's just me and a few other good souls who are picking things up off the trail, but who are possibly overlooking the things that are just a little bit off trail 
because there's a certain amount of risk that comes with coming into these places, including disorientation and possibly never getting back to the trail. I don't really fear those things. In fact, I came up to this very spot because there were time and time again signs these birds actually even turned me around in my, in my path on the trail, on the main loop. And I headed off trail at a point that I hadn't seen when I was walking from the other direction. But it was mostly because the birds flew in that specific path. I'm all alone on the trail. I mean, there are plenty of people here. But for me, I'm getting to enjoy this all alone. And I'm being led not just by my intuition, I'm following my heart. When we follow our heart, we help one another. And I suppose and surmise that there are a lot of people who have trouble forgiving, you know? There's a lot of step parents out there, um, step children, um, people who don't talk because of one division or another, long division or short division. It doesn't matter, it's all division. Um, people that talk only to denounce one another and people who try to take back and hide their words after the fact. Now, I'm not going to go and criticize, I'm just pointing out an observation that I'm aware of because I myself used to be a troublesome youth. In my youth I learned what could get me to the next level in terms of how do I fit in among the adults. Now, fitting in among the adults is pretty unique because we go by a segment of things called laws, and these laws are slightly different from something that's in our books of peace that many of us have been exposed to, which talk about commandments, which are also laws. You know, these are, these are things that, they're just the laws of compassion. If we're in a good mood, we're probably not gonna be cursing at something, and if we're cursing at something, it's possibly a level to move up the chain towards other things that we could do if we weren't very compassionate towards one another. So I'm not trying to convert you into anything, I'm just saying that the perspective needs to be broadened for those who are maybe feeling a little bit anxious when they're hearing what I'm saying. The anxiety that we feel, there's, there are birds flying over right now, usually profound moments occur while I'm speaking and birds are flying over at that precise moment. The, the, Anxiety that we oftentimes feel is simply a recognition of self. So if someone else causes an anxiety in you, even upon seeing them, it's possibly you see something in yourself that you're uncomfortable with. And that is something that we t typically tend to hide in ourselves. It's not necessarily repressed. It's not necessarily acted against. It's just something we try to hide from ourselves. So we we're, might not even be paying attention to the levels of judgment that occur in our own minds when we are not at ease. So if this video is making you anxious, go back to the birds, see that again. Look at the face that I was making. Look at how many words I'm using to express these concepts. You who know me in person know that I'm not really a talker. I don't like to go out and put myself out there on display None of what I've been doing regularly for the past X amount of time since I walked up the trail in Big Bend National Park has been seemingly normal to most people. So that probably scares people. Anxiety, it's not really scaring you. You're just anxious, you know? You don't know, what is this person doing? I've never done it. That can make you anxious. Nothing that I'm doing is twisting the law. It's basically observation. I'm reflecting the things that I'm seeing here in real life. You know, if I see something happening in wildlife and I ask a question because I'm concerned, that's because it's happening and we need to possibly observe that and someone might document these incidents and show them with us, show them, share them with us in ways that we can recognize and others may not. You know, some people may not have what is known as a stoicism. They may not have the stoicism to watch something without turning in horror or fear or disgust. We have to have a full conversation. These agreements to disagree that wildlife is struggling. I mean, obviously, I'm telling you, it's abundant. <laughs> and at the same time, I've, I'm sitting right next to some deer poo I think that's what it is. And 
and that's one of two amounts that I found out here in this area. There's not much else. It used to be I could find this right on the trails, especially down in the early entrance area of the main loop. But there's not a lot. And when you start looking, and when I tell you this, you might, might or might not believe me. Since today is a misty day, do you guys remember walking in, in, in Texas and on those misty days seeing the spider webs on the ground covered in mist? I don't know what that is. I think that's a deer. Maybe that it doesn't want me to say the rest of this story or that I need to pipe it down. Maybe it's being scared by the things that I'm saying. I've learned a lot about animals recently because I learned a lot about myself. The mist and all of the ground that I've covered so far, I've seen two spider webs. It's in the 50s right now. It feels good, actually. And normally on a day like this, we would see dozens upon dozens of spider webs all on the trail's edge. No such luck. I think I hear hooves, so I think it's a deer. I'm not sure what that animal was or is. But I'm in its home and I'm gonna be leaving. I was basically here to showcase what you saw and to say what was channeled through me. The spiders that I used to see here on a day like today, such as today, or any other day, especially the warm days that I was here just last week, would be everywhere. People ask about signs. The signs are always positive. When I say there were spiders everywhere, the birds flying by at that moment was no coincidence. It was confirmation. And you have to be aligned with a certain energy to see signs in a certain way. And a lot of people will talk a certain way and know a lot of the things that are true, but may not have the guidance in their heart to follow with precise accuracy. I probably have a lot to learn, but it's hard to meet mentors when people do not want to talk about these things because they're almost new age. But is that true, really? Do you think that what I'm saying is new age? Or do you think that you guys are listening because you hear what I'm saying and you know it's true also? I think it's that. And because of that, I ask you, please, if you haven't already, click subscribe, share this, talk about it in your circles. I'm a nobody in the big picture, just like any other nobody. All of our nobodies together definitely outshine the somebodies. And the somebodies aren't always evil, anxious corporate entities. Sometimes they're wise. They just don't have the ability to make the connections with the ones who don't have the resources to showcase some of these things on levels that are unfiltered. I've participated in quite a number of forums, some of which I've become the moderator to by weird, sheer coincidences. And I am constantly met with people trying to denounce what I'm saying because I'm telling thoughts that are just simply, I don't know if I align with a specific party when anything is getting harmed. And I don't mean that as anti-government or anti-establishment. I mean that what we do daily, collectively, is what I can see evidence of in mother nature, in the form of what nature I see and don't see, and also in the form of what I do see. So I hope you appreciate this and enjoy the video collage that you'll see at the end. I'll probably add a little bit of music to it, something soothing. 
and I will play that specifically for this video so that you have something soothing and it's gonna match the somber approach that I'm taking to say these things that I'm saying. I, I never used to be able to play guitar really well and talk at the same time. I can barely do that now. I'm not a professional singer that I'm aware of yet. And at the same time, I'll do anything it takes to share a message, even at the expense that I hope it doesn't come to, which is the loss of my own freedom to do these things and to see these things that I've been able to do and see for quite some time. At the same exact time though, there's nobody else seeing these things the way that I'm seeing it, or so I believe, until I have my peers communicate with me again, out of compassion. In love, when you're in love, every day is a beautiful day. You don't have to worry about if someone tags you in to say a prayer, you know, to give thanks. You're, you're happy, you understand, you're part of the energy. When you're part of the energy, and the energy is, un, it's unrestrained, you know it. And sometimes in those moments of not having restraint, as toddlers, we might crash into the walls, one another. There are so many, you know, I mean, vehicles, so many different ways that these words can be taken. And we never consider that how we feel, maybe the other person feels the same way, but in different extremes because of different situations they've been habituated to. So for me, walking up this trail in the 50s with some possible chance of rain and only seeing, I'm seeing a bug right now flying around, first bug that I'm seeing, knowing something's crunching in the woods behind me and not worried about it because I'm pretty sure it was a deer. It's probably getting a tactical view. And even if it were a bobcat or a mountain lion, I would get a picture and include that on this video for your viewership, whether or not you subscribe and give me the credit that's due. Give me credit, guys. Give me some time. That deer just sniffed again. Did you hear it? first two were me the other one was coming from back there so there's still wildlife here in abundance even in us even in one another and perhaps it's time for us as wildlife to start communicating together again I recently communicated to a snake which had been injured on the highway did you get to watch that video do you want to? I'll put the link in the description. If I knew how to put a clickable link in here, I'm, actually I might share it in this video itself. That way you can see just like exponentially how you can begin to learn when you just shift your mind just a little bit. Brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand. Chew your food on the side you're not used to chewing it on. trying to think of other ones I, I mean there's so many different ways look at yourself in the mirror with the eye that you normally don't look at yourself in the mirror with you may not remember some of these things use a different hand to write something short try to recall your dreams and try not to get agitated when people bring new concepts to the table or questions that are relevant but that we don't know how to answer because we're afraid. I've seen a lot of people in no fear shirts and that's all that they're comprised of. We like to emulate what we want to become because we admire that. But sometimes we don't have the right leaders to inspire us in those directions. And sometimes they're looking us right in the face whenever they talk with us at any place that we talk with any other person. I think that's about enough for now for this video. 
I saw something move real suddenly under these rocks over here. It's a little too cold for reptiles generally. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks again for watching this series. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm going to put up a few segments of something called intermission that I just kind of recorded here and there. Just having fun. And I hope that you have fun watching along with these things. And I hope that how you hear me is different. And I hope that I regain the segments that I continue to lose. As many subscribers as I get, I basically lose two for every six, it seems like. And it's a very interesting way to grow uh, because it sounds like I'm too strong for some people to accept. I don't understand. If talking about self-control is something that people dislike and don't tune into, it makes me wonder what we are tuning into. And then I look back on my past and I remember, ah, I forgot. It took someone else to help me to recognize that if I ate differently for seven days, the energy that I had might be different, possibly for a lifetime. Anyway, I don't know if you can hear it, the rain. I'm not trying to advertise this umbrella, although it is pretty fantastic, so. I've slammed the, the car door on it a couple of times, loaned it out several times. It's been in my backpacks getting, you know, bent, compressed. It's a strong umbrella, minimal, and it's made out of stuff that I have in my camping gear, you know, lightweight poles, and, and it feels good. I don't even know why I'm talking about it except for to say, what if we could pick up all this plastic on the trail today and manufacture some kind of intricate rod system for umbrellas to share with people at the bottom of the trail on rainy days like this that we could use maybe and take if we wanted because it just was free it was made out of resources that post-consumer resources which there are abundances of right now in the world and with the right ideas and the right people not necessarily myself but the right people in charge of funneling these ideas and by funneling, I mean getting the, the pay, the recognition that it takes to make these ideas realities, I think some of it could happen, you know? And it's, it's just one random idea. It's not gonna change the world, except for that it will. It'll pick up trash off these trails and make it into something that's not trashy and beautiful, probably. That's all of us, too. Some of us are damaged, discarded, treated like rubbish, there's nothing that little dirt and water can't polish out. And sun can't help grow. And birds of nature can't help us to smile and think about the things that we saw today with one another. How beautiful that we're able to smile with one another. These birds that just flew over were just above the, the cloud, cloud layer, so I couldn't even see them. Anyway, if I run into the deer, I'll let you know. I'm going to turn this camera off and get going. Don't panic. You got this. It's one step at a time. One breath at a time. As you're laying down to sleep tonight, think about your dreams. Did you see them that time? Twice I've talked about dreams and the birds have come right then. It makes me wonder. Is that a message for me? I write down my dreams all the time. Every morning I remember, today I dreamed I was with, with my classmates from grade school. I remember all of the, the classmates that were with me and how, how it felt to be with them. I mean, these were people that were fun to be friends with and it would still be fun to be friends with, with my classmates from school. I've learned a lot of things about myself, you know, and I've, I've been selfish in the past because I didn't have any siblings and probably because my parenting was challenged. But as friends with the people that I grew up with who were friends with me, I mean, we formed lifelong bonds, commitments, just like we would with our step whoever's and our, our real whoever's, you know? 
our real friends, our real family, our real parents, etc. We formed relationships with everyone that we've encountered throughout time. And how we think of one another, especially if the thoughts are warranted or unwarranted because we ourselves are stubborn and unwilling to have a conversation, those situations are the things that cause us true anxiety. And I believe it's just confronting the fact that we have things that we want to talk to or about from our past and are unable to that drives, escalates the anxiety level. Sometimes talking in nature about these things helps. Coming out and saying a prayer, all of these things are things that we can all do. It's just people are conditioned to be afraid of certain things. Well, the raindrops are starting to fall. And I feel like that's enough words for the most amazing of the 30 editions, which probably were more or less than 30 based on some errant counting when I was recording in advance. And uh, this, no matter how many episodes, this was the most amazing one where I got to show you the birds that flew and landed and dis displayed themselves for you, not for me. Although I'm being told it was for me as well. I'm gonna get going, or at least enjoy this moment for a while, and uh, we'll talk to you when we talk to you. Have a good day. I don't know if you're watching this during the day or at night. When you're watching this, but was I all that unprepared? Or was I prepared? How lucky to be hanging out with possibly a deer in the middle of one of my favorite places, so close to home. I would show you these locations if we had time to do it and We would definitely keep our social distance from the crowds and we would get exercise at the same time as being able to witness these beautiful moments and have these conversations. So I think that's what most of us are uncomfortable with is having the conversations that lead to those inner perspectives because as we question ourselves, we really do think something has to change. What is that something? Have a great day. Peace. Thanks for watching. I thought I'd share a song from San Antonio. It's still cold outside and there's still snow. My dog don't want to go outside. Some have power some have water, some have work to do when it's all over, some are lucky to be inside. And in the distance, the sirens sound, you know there's angels all around, they're warm delivered with a smile. And in a moment, it's all gone. The snow we had has melted. The warmer days return.
the summer is more kind. I'll take the spring to help us all unwind. And maybe this year my plants won't burn. And if you try, you can save some. A freezer of snow for fun. Drinks for drinks in summertime. I thought I'd share a song from San Antonio. It's still cold outside and there's still snow. My dog don't want to go outside. And can you blame him? Ha, 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 ha.